Another day, another story. Robbers have used tunnels, explosives and even surfboard repair foam to make off with millions. Why rob banks? Because that's where the money is. Welcome to Tabo Eminent Channel. It's a saying often inaccurately attributed to US bank robber, Slick Willie, Sutton, but it's true. Banks have historically been big targets for robbers because of all the money in their vaults, as well as all the jewelry, stock certificates and other valuables in their safe deposit boxes. As the heists featured below reveal, people will go to great lengths to rob a bank. Those lengths include digging secret tunnels, exploding walls, kidnapping bank executives and disarming alarms with surfboard repair foam. One wonders if the surfer, robbers in the film Point Break ever thought of that. Here are five daring bank heists where the robbers walked away with millions. 1. The Baker Street Bank Heist. In one of Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes stories, The Red-Headed League, a group of men attempts to rob a bank vault by digging a tunnel underneath it from a nearby building. Eighty years after the story's publication, a very similar robbery took place on the street where the fictional Holmes resided. In 1971, a group of robbers rented out a ground-floor store near the Baker Street branch of Lloyds Bank in London. The group had discovered that the bank had a vault full of safe deposit boxes and that the vault's alarm sensors on its floor had been turned off due to nearby roadwork, triggering false alarms. From the rented store, the robbers dug a tunnel that they used to enter the vault through its floor in early September. An amateur ham radio enthusiast named Robert Rowlands actually overheard the robbers chatting on their walkie-talkies during the robbery, and alerted the police. The police checked the vault door at the Baker Street branch while the robbers were inside. But because the door was still locked, they didn't think anything was amiss. The robbers made off with an estimated 3 million British pounds, around 7 million US dollars at the time and 51 million dollars today. However, one of them had made the mistake of using his own name to lease the store where they dug the tunnel, and the oversight led to his conviction, along with three other men involved in the robbery. 2. The United California Bank Heist. On March 24, 1972, a group of robbers broke into the United California Bank in Laguna Nigel, California, based on a tip that President Richard Nixon had stashed some $30 million in illegal campaign funds there. The robbers, who flew in from Ohio, made off with an estimated $12 million, making it the largest U.S. bank heist at the time. Rumor had it that the $30 million had actually been a bribe from Jimmy Hoffa, former president of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. Nixon commuted Hoffa's prison sentence in 1971. The robbery team was led by Armiel Dinzio, who recruited his nephew, brother, brother-in-law and two other men to carry out the heist. Nixon, was not one of our favorite people to begin with, recalled Harry Barber, Dinzio's nephew who participated in the heist, to the Daily Beast in 2019. We were told that Nixon was hiding some money. So we figured, he couldn't cry to nobody. Who's he going to cry to? He stole it himself. The six-man team disabled the bank's alarm system by spraying the inside of the main alarm with a surfboard repair foam. They used dynamite to blow a hole in the roof of the bank on a Friday and spent the whole weekend going through the vault. The FBI eventually tracked down the robbers, but it's still unclear whether the money they stole was actually part of Nixon's secret stash. 3. The Northern Bank Heist On the Sunday before Christmas in 2004, a group of masked robbers arrived at the homes of two bank executives in Northern Ireland. The executives, Chris Ward and Kevin McMullen, both worked at the headquarters of Northern Bank in Belfast. The robbers took the families of both men hostage and threatened to kill them if Ward and McMullen didn't help the robbers steal from the bank. The Northern Bank heist refers to a high-profile robbery that took place in Belfast, Northern Ireland, in December 2004. The heist was executed by a criminal group, and it was one of the largest cash robberies in British history at the time. Here are the key details of the Northern Bank heist. Date and location. The heist occurred over the weekend of December 18, 20, 2004, at the headquarters of the Northern Bank in Belfast. Execution. The criminals involved in the heist kidnapped the families of two bank officials. They held the families hostage, forcing the bank officials to cooperate. 
The officials were then compelled to help the criminals gain access to the bank's cash handling area. The robbers stole approximately £26.5 million, about $50 million, in cash. Consequences The heist had significant repercussions. Due to the large amount stolen and the apparent sophistication of the operation, it attracted widespread attention. The authorities launched investigations, and security measures in financial institutions were subsequently scrutinized and enhanced. Suspects and investigations The Provisional Irish Republican Army IRA, was initially suspected of involvement due to the complexity and scale of the operation. However, the IRA denied any connection to the heist. The investigation continued for several years, but convictions were limited, and many of the stolen funds were never recovered. The Northern Bank heist remains a notable and mysterious criminal event, highlighting the challenges of investigating and solving high stakes, complex heists with potential political implications. The next day, Ward and McMullen arrived at work as though nothing had happened, per the kidnappers' demands. That evening, after the bank closed, Ward and McMullen opened the vault for the kidnappers, who made off with an estimated 26.5 million British pounds, about 42.5 million US dollars at the time. Seemingly without evidence, police officers blamed the robbery on the IRA, the Irish paramilitary organization that opposes British rule. These accusations put a strain on the ongoing Northern Ireland peace process within the United Kingdom. However, in the 18 years since the robbery, no one has ever been charged for it. 4. The British Bank of the Middle East Heist In January 1976, amid the chaos of the Lebanese Civil War, a group of robbers staged the largest ever theft of safe deposit boxes, according to the Guinness World Records. The British Bank of the Middle East BBME, heist took place in Beirut, Lebanon, in 1976. It is considered one of the most audacious and lucrative bank heists in history. The operation was carried out by a group associated with the Palestine Liberation Organization PLO, and was orchestrated by international terrorist and mastermind Carlos the Jackal, Illich Ramirez Sanchez. Here are the key details of the BBME heist. Date and Location The heist occurred on January 20, 1976, at the British Bank of the Middle East in Beirut, Lebanon. Execution A group of approximately 15 gunmen, associated with Carlos the Jackal and the PLO, stormed the bank. They took hostages and seized control of the bank's main vault, which contained safety deposit boxes belonging to both individuals and businesses. The gunmen spent several days in the bank, meticulously drilling through the vault's walls to access the safe deposit boxes. Amount stolen The exact amount stolen is not known, but estimates range from $20 million to $50 million in cash, gold, and valuables. The loot included a significant amount of jewelry, documents, and other valuables stored in the safety deposit boxes. Escape After the heist, the perpetrators managed to escape with the stolen goods. The funds and valuables were believed to have been used to finance various terrorist activities. Investigation The investigation into the BBME heist faced numerous challenges, including political complexities in Lebanon at the time. Carlos the Jackal, who had orchestrated the operation, was not apprehended immediately in connection with the heist. The stolen funds were used to fund terrorist activities, making it difficult to trace and recover the assets. The BBME heist remains one of the most notable examples of a politically motivated bank robbery, demonstrating the intersection between criminal enterprises and geopolitical conflicts during that era. The target was the British Bank of the Middle East in Beirut. Using explosives, the group blasted through a wall that the bank shared with a Catholic church. After locksmiths opened the vault, the robbers made off with an estimated $20 to $50 million in gold bars, stock certificates, jewelry and various currencies. Although British and US media have alleged that the robbers had some connection to the Palestine Liberation Organization, no one has ever been charged in this heist. 5. The Banco Central Heist In 2005, a group of robbers rented a building in Fortaleza, Brazil in the name of an artificial turf company. In reality, 
the group wasn't making synthetic turf, they were digging a tunnel more than 250 feet long to the city's Banco Central Bank branch. The Banco Central heist refers to a notable bank robbery that took place in Fortaleza, Brazil, in 2005. The heist is considered one of the most audacious and sophisticated in history due to the extensive tunneling operation employed by the criminals. Here are the key details. Date and location. The Banco Central heist occurred over the weekend of August 6-7, 2005, in Fortaleza, a city in northeastern Brazil. Execution. A criminal gang spent three months tunneling from a rented house to the Banco Central's vault, which was located more than 78 meters away. The tunnel, measuring about 78 meters in length and 70 centimeters in diameter, was equipped with lights, ventilation, and a rail system to transport soil. The thieves successfully reached the bank's vault. Amount stolen. The gang managed to steal approximately 160 million Brazilian reais, equivalent to around $70 million USD at the time. The majority of the stolen money consisted of 50 real notes. Escape. After the heist, the gang fled the scene. The tunnel went unnoticed until the robbery was discovered, as the criminals had strategically chosen a route that avoided major underground infrastructure. Investigation. The authorities launched an investigation into the heist, and over 20 people were arrested in connection with the crime. However, a significant portion of the stolen funds was never recovered. The Banco Central heist remains a remarkable example of criminal ingenuity and determination. The extensive tunneling operation demonstrated a high level of planning and organization on the part of the criminals involved. The robbers took about three months to dig the tunnel from the rented building to the bank. On the first weekend in August, the team broke through the bank floor and made off with more than 150 million Brazilian reals, around 70 million US dollars at the time. It wasn't until Monday that employees at the bank realized the theft had occurred. Two months later, the supposed leader of the robbery, 26-year-old Luis Fernando Ribeiro, was kidnapped and held for ransom. After his family paid $890,000 in ransom, the kidnappers killed him and left his body on a road outside Rio de Janeiro. The New York Times reported at the time that some state prosecutors in Brazil believe police officers may have been involved in Ribeiro's kidnapping and murder. Thanks for watching. Request you to subscribe the channel.